Bastion is an indie action RPG that was released in the late summer of 2011. It was created by Supergiant Games and published by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. The game is currently available on Steam for £11.49, and having recently purchased and played it myself, I thought so I could share some of the game's standout features with you. Firstly, this game is rather unique in the sense that it has almost constant narration. That alone may not be entirely unique, but the quality of the narration coupled with the overall enjoyment of listening to the narrator certainly is. The narrator in question is a man called Logan Cunningham, whose voice could rival that of Morgan Freeman's. You certainly won't get tired of the game's script during gameplay. The general content can be rather witty, and you get the sense that the narrator is almost like a wise big brother type feature. Anyway, the game's main character is simply known as The Kid. Not a very original name, but rather fitting in the context of the world he lives, or rather what has become of the world. The game starts with the character waking up on a suspended rock, supposedly after the devastating effects of something known as the Calamity. Whether this is a person, group, event, or other, is a mystery at this point. Early in the game, you encounter the narrator and the game's namesake, the Bastion, which appears to be the last beacon of hope after the Calamity, along with the fact that the narrator appears to be the only other living human. I say human, I'm not entirely sure what species they are, but they certainly resemble humans. Now the gameplay. I mean, come on. The ground forms as you walk. That's something beautiful. Not only does it give the game an amazing visual aspect, but it also adds to the gameplay. You could easily walk past secret items just because you didn't notice the ground start to form as you sauntered past. This means that savvy players will take extra steps to explore every platform encountered, prolonging the game time and often leading to great rewards. These said rewards can be items to upgrade weapons, vast amounts of the game's currency, known as fragments, or blueprints to create new buildings at the Bastion. At the Bastion, you can place cores in the monument in the center. These cores are generally collected at the end of each level. They then go on to give the Bastion the ability to create a new building, providing the blueprints are available. These buildings can help provide buffs, upgrade weapons, allow shopping. There is also a way to increase the game's difficulty through the use of sacred items. Religion is an aspect of Bastion that is really quite interesting, and each god's item will affect the gameplay in different ways. They can make the enemies quicker or maybe even more powerful. It's your choice, but either way, the game rewards you for risking life and limb by giving the XP and great drops. The main enemies are classes among species known as the Windbags. This is the name given to them by the narrator. These classes increase in difficulty from small swarms of weak squirts to one strong tank Windbag. However, initially, the game doesn't have much in the way of variety when it comes to enemies. Windbags form the main bulk of enemies you will encounter, along with the occasional turret. This does change as the game progresses and the plot develops, though. How do you fight these enemies? In glorious isometric combat through the use of upgradable weapons. Swords, guns, bows, bombs, you name it, the game has it. Except if you name lasers. I'm not entirely sure if the game has lasers yet. Personally, I find a sword and a gun loadout to be preferable, but you can customize your character to have a two weapon loadout of your choice. You can also select a special attack to complement one of those weapons, but at the cost of black potions you can collect throughout the game. The combat is very fun. The swarms of enemies will be different as the game progresses, and you certainly have to use more than two weapons overall to get further into the game. Each of these weapons you can customize through the use of fragments in different buildings and using items you collect along the way. These will have different effects depending on the path you choose to upgrade your item. These paths are interchangeable throughout the game and sometimes it may be useful to change your path as you go on to the next level. Finally, I'm going to wrap up this review with what I think is one of the highlights of the game itself. The story, the concept, the combat, the customizable weapons, the enemies, the visual aspect are all really impressive, but the soundtrack is something else. It is very rare that a soundtrack to a game can even rival this. I'm just going to leave the last couple of seconds of this video with a snippet of what enjoyment the audio will provide upon playing this game. Overall, Bastion is a highly enjoyable game, and I would certainly recommend the purchase. For £11, it certainly provides enough entertainment. I've been Reese, and this has been my review of Bastion. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.